look win. good. You can't judge a book by its cover, but you can judge a man by his facial hair. Hey everyone! Come and see how good I look! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 badass movie mustaches and beards. I'll bust you up. Go for it. For this list, we focused on the best human facial hair caught on film. There are no limits when it comes to style. If it's grown on the chin, then it's in. <laughs> but we're singling out those that we deem the most unique and memorable. Number 10. Wolverine, the X-Men franchise. What the hell are you doing? Razor blades aren't hard to come by for this mutant megastar. He's a purpose-built barber with anger issues and a forte for fashion. Oh, sure he is. And Hugh Jackman's mutton chops reek of style. Really? They're almost as recognizable as his weapon of choice. And if looks could kill, they'd be just as deadly. A stylish combination of the rough and the smooth, his whiskers may look wild, but they've been cut to perfection. I know, but there's a problem. You're not part of the group. Hello, children. Comfy. Cozy. Number nine, Captain Hook. Hook. <laughs> when your eyebrows are as thick as your mustache is thin, you know you're making a serious statement about something. See how greatly the men favor you, sir. The puling spawn, how I despise them. Dustin Hoffman is almost unrecognizable as this early 90s version of the villainous Hook. And his twirly top lip is a feat of style and design proving to all that it's cool to be cruel. Who doubted me? Peter Pan is the boy who wouldn't grow up, and Captain Hook is the stash that never gets old. Finally, I'm going to kill Peter Pan, that cocky boy who cut off my hand and fed it to the crocodile! <laughs> Number eight, Rubius Hagrid, the Harry Potter franchise. Professor Dumbledore, sir. Professor McGonagall. A giant of a beard for a giant of a man. Hagrid's head is almost as hairy as it's possible to be. A magical effort that defeats even Dumbledore's. Yes, it's a call to arms for everything curly. The less than groomed approach might have made him look scary and slightly insane. But there's nothing to fear behind this facial fuzz. Sorry about that. Hagrid. He's good and brave and in need of a shave. <gasps> You ready, Lucia? Oh, right here, sir. Number seven, Seneca Crane, The Hunger Games. That's it. That's excellent. Is it sublime or just plain ridiculous? Whatever it is, it's certainly something different. What do you mean? A look not dissimilar to that of Dr. Arliss Loveless in Wild Wild West. Personally, I like the symmetry of it. Seneca Crane's is beer cheek at its absolute best. It looks fantastic. It looks flamboyant. It looks like it's made of fuzzy felt. But I think it has grown from that. <laughs> I think it's uh, something that knits us all together. We don't like him, but we do like his trim. Seneca's a game maker, but his beard? Well, that's a game changer. So, contain it. Number six, Gandalf, the Lord of the Rings franchise. A wizard is never late. A relic of Middle-earth, almost as momentous as the ring itself. He arrives precisely when he means to. Gandalf's beard is a little less secret and probably less safe. It looks good with a hat and with a pipe. It's five o'clock shadow times infinity. In the darkness, bite them. A veil of fluff that makes his voice extra gruff. It's a beardy disguise that makes him seem extra wise. I have no memory of this place. A wiry white wizarding effort this list would be incomplete without it. I will help you bear this burden, Frodo Baggins. Number five, Bill the Butcher Cutting, Gangs of New York. You may have misgivings, but don't go believing that, Jack. That way lies damnation. This is Daniel Day-Lewis at his murderous and mustachioed best. Bill's handlebar is full, it's got flicks, and it frightens all of Manhattan. I'm New York. Don't you never come in here empty-handed again. It's not narcissistic, but it is neatly finished. It's something to stroke whilst he ponders who to kill. That's close enough. It's authority, it's prosperity, it might even be a little itchy. Whoopsie-daisy! A symbol of the butcher, 
he reigned supreme at five points, and he's placed fifth on our list. We are met at this chosen ground to settle for good and all. Who holds sway over the five points? Number four, James Clubber Lang, Rocky Three. Don't get a sucker no statue. Give him guts. I told you I wasn't going away. You got your shot. Now give me mine. This beard is as sharp as its owner is strong. This country wants to keep me down. Keep everybody weak. They don't want a man like me to have the title because I'm not a puppet like that fool up there. It's designer stubble for a main event fighter. And when placed in the same ring, it makes Stallone look like a grandma. Let me go, let me go. That's what I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Let him go. The razor sharp edging packs one hell of a punch. It's a look that turns up the trash talking just by being there. He's still a maid for me, and he's gonna get hurt. It's face fuzz of fury, a big time beard, and it puts Mr. T just outside our top three. Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. Ah, from the heart and the end of Number three, The Little Tramp, The Little Tramp film series. Ah. Herring shouldn't smell it and find from garbage, and garbage shouldn't smell it and find from herring. Charlie Chaplin's upper lip is an icon. It's a symbol of the silent movie, a bygone age, and Hollywood's heyday. Oh, yes. His toothbrush stash and bowler hat made his face funny, and his slapstick sensational. Sadly, the look was hijacked by Hitler during World War II and quickly became a symbol for the Nazis. Chaplin's was the original, though. He shaved it first, and he wore it better. I'm sorry for the mishap that occurred to Madame Napoloni at the railroad station. What's that? What's that? I'm sorry for the Napoloni that occurred at the, at the, at the rail... Number two. What do you say to three shillings? And we forget the name. Captain Jack Sparrow, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Can you sail under the command of a pirate? If you can braid your own beard, you're doing well in life. If you can braid it twice, then you've really cracked it. And I half expected it to be made of wood. The second seafarer to make this list, Captain Jack proves that a life at sea is a life in front of the mirror. If I see one, I shall inform you immediately. His double goatee is pirate perfection. Original, outlandish, and accessorized with beads. It shivers our timbers, it's as jolly as the Roger. Drink up, me hearty Joe ho Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! The very best there is when you absolutely, positively got to kill every mother in the room, except no substitutes. Contemptuous of authority and irresistible to women. Francois is just the type of aggressive sociopath who can wage and win a war of nerves. Excuse me for asking, nope, but kind of dead in here, isn't it? Number one, Pai Mei, Kill Bill, Volume 2. <laughs> He's been alive for hundreds of years. He knows how to kill Bill. And most incredibly, he's got a beard that looks just as good when you flick it over your shoulder. You might think that a hermit wouldn't care too much for grooming, but Pai Mei does, and big style. His white wisps are pristine. In fact, it's the ultimate thinking man's beard. He's the goatee grandmaster, and he's beard flicked his way to first place. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I like it, I like it. <laughs> Whose facial hair did we forget? This kind of mark cannot be seen. It lives in your very skin. For more fuzzy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Dead meat. <laughs>